all right so now um, what we want to do why don't we try xml i'll write done okay so uh, the the problem is if you want to read an xml file by default you cannot say spark.read.xml so far it is not available so if you just google just go to google uh, and if you search for databricks spark xml okay uh, this company called a databricks who is the inventors of spark they have created a spark xml data source okay so what is this they, it's a package actually so you can download this package and using this package you can read xml file okay and the, the question is how do you download this package right so while starting the spark shell you can ask spark to download this package so i have an xml file if you go to the folder here there is an xml file called where is it is can you see some xml file where ha huh, employees.xml this one is an xml file if i open this see it's pure xml right uh, so it has this is called a root tag employees this one and this is called a row tag right employee so this is how this and within that you have employee number name then address city country blah 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 now first step that you need to do is upload this file in the data sets folder in hadoop and if you again go back to the folder there is a file called reading json and xml modified if you open this uh, it it is clearly written to read xml files you need to restart your spark shell with the below command now modify this you say spark shell hyphen hyphen master local right local and then you are saying packages com databricks spark xml package this means you are starting your spark shell and asking sorry 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 it should be py spark right it's not spark shell hmm by mistake i have written yeah say py spark 2 okay i was writing the other one so simply say py spark 2 master local and you can see it is downloading can you see resolving dependencies resolution report this module it found right it will download this xml module you can clearly see so now your spark shell is running but it also added that xml module right so this is the command there is a mistake in the notepad if you want you can edit it okay uh there is this is the command look at my screen this is the exact command you have to type so one way is that you can download in the shell now if you are writing a code or something you can add it in the code like the package name while running the code it will download it actually for you you can also get a jar of this package okay locally if you want to add it like every time otherwise you have to download it right so it is available as a jar file you can add it but this is the best way to try are you able to start the shells yeah right in the local mode great so it says started now if you want to read it this is the command it's very simple so how do you read it you will say spark dot read dot format there is a method called read dot format and you have to mention what package you are using to read option infer schema true which means you want to automatically understand the schema root tag is employee row tag is employee and dot load give the location and now if i do a that's enough so depending on the structure of your uh, like this has a specific root tag and row tag so you have to mention what is what uh, if you want more information here it will be given right so it says these are the features you can add path path is the location then a row tag you have to give row tag and if you want there is something called sampling ratio we don't want to use it whether you want to exclude any attributes right 
whether you want to treat empty values as null right and all these things column number of corrupted record value tag character set so anything that you want it is here so now we used a very simple file but you can see that it perfectly created a data frame from an xml file so you have a data frame now i can start querying the data try this uh, by yourself now uh, don't don't trust everything that i teach <laughs> i mean this is how you read xml but not every xml you can read like this you know that right if there is a proper structure you can read some xml files will be much more complicated than this so there you have to manually do something to give a structure and then only you can because we had a use case where we were getting this v xml you know voice xml like if you place a phone call you call the customer care right so if you are calling the customer care you will say press 1 press 2 so these call centers they will record it like how much you called and all these things that will come in a voice xml format it will come from the ip telephony so this ip telephones they will push it as a structure called voice xml v xml you can't read it in this it won't it will no i don't know what it ha ha then you will read it so we actually did that okay but if you give this package you'll say i don't know what you're talking about it has a structure and all but not every xml you can read like this so a lot of applications are there which store or give you the data in the json format that api if you connect right but there is no rule like you should use only json or xml it depends on the application so today more most of the javascript javascripts everything is built on json but xml is also there. like i said we had vb xml so voice xml so some systems produce them so you are just a consumer when when, when normally when we are doing big data analytics we are just consumers we just get the data so we cannot say that give me only json if the application is generating xml uh, now uh, i i told you i think there is one more format called avro oh forgot sorry you can also read from avro that is c when you no 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 avro is normal text data with metadata i will show you avro tomorrow if you open it in a normal text file it may not make sense you will see the data there will be a header kind of thing where you have metadata okay then the original data i'll show you avro tomorrow file if i if i have an avro file i can simply say uh, there is a package for reading avro again data breaks you say start with the package it will read now in one of our project what use case we had uh, we had this train engines again ge because my major client is ge so they have this train engine locomotive engine right this train engine will produce uh, sensor data and that sensor data they send to some cloud some place from there it will land on your uh, kafka okay but that will come in avro format because uh, there was a name uh, it is called a not incident i am thinking incident not incident uh, what you call <laughs> in my mind uh, it is coming as incident not incident there is a particular name because every 2 second or 3 second one file will land in that folder so the sensor data is continuously streamed and every 1 second or 2 second you it will land as a dot avro file in a folder in kafka actually kafka topic then you have to read from kafka to spark but even with using this avro uh, databricks package we were not able to read avro file so they wrote a normal java program <laughs> where they will read the avro up convert and apply whatever schema they have and give like a proper tabular format to spark and spark will process it so most of the organizations will have a data ingestion team they will handle because not even though i am saying that you can read json you can read this if you actually go to production you will have n number of other problems so not everything will happen automatically like this so you will have a data ingestion team they will take the avro and they will convert it into some structure and say that hey spark take it right so not everything will work exactly like it is written i am just saying uh, ah event not incident <laughs> so there is it's called events every 2 seconds an event will happen whenever there is an event a file will appear in then this kafka topic okay and we were continuously reading it so avro files will have a dot avro extension like abc dot avro it will be written tomorrow we will be downloading data from twitter using flume and that data will come as avro so you can actually see what is avro you don't have to worry so we will see avro tomorrow so normally when you use 
Flume to get the data from Twitter, uh, there are two options. One format you can use JSON, second format is Avro. So, we are using Avro in the exercise. So, you will see the tweets actually coming as Avro format. Okay.